Digital Illusion CEAB, or DICE, brought us the Battlefield series and rebooted Star Wars Battlefront franchises which we're all familiar with. But did you know they also made a few Xbox races like Rally Sport Challenge and Midtown Madness 3? So they know how to make a video game other than just shooters, but they really went out of their comfort zone on this one when they released a game like no other called Mirror's Edge. Platformers were the biggest gaming cash cows of the 90s, with so many franchises spawned in that decade, including Commander Keen, Sonic the Hedgehog, Crash Bandicoot, and Spyro the Dragon. But when the millennium arrived, the genre was on the decline, and now first person shooters are all the rage. What DICE did was combine both genres together to make a first person platformer. I mean, 2D or even a 3D platformer. But putting cameras in the eye sockets of a jumpy happy protagonist? Imagine Crash Bandicoot in first person. Well, you'll be guaranteed motion sickness with all those front flips. But my point is, that's a really good idea. This isn't the first time it was done, with Metroid Prime being released six years earlier, but I'm disappointed there aren't that many first person platformers out there. Someone should find a way to make it work through VR. We call ourselves runners. We exist on the edge, between the gloss and the reality. The mirror's edge. We keep out of trouble, out of sight, and the cops don't bother us. The story itself also fits in with the genre perfectly. You are in the eyes of Faith Connors, ironically a runner, who delivers packages for revolutionary groups. Her mother was killed in the November riots oppressing the oppressive regime. She ran away from home when she was 16 and robbed for a living. She was caught by former runner Mercury. He offered to train Faith and the rest is history. Mom and Dad were friends with Pope. Organized protests, lobbied the mayor, took me and Kate on marches. But I never really understood why back then. What it meant. After performing an everyday delivery, just avoiding the police, nice hero shot. Faith noticed her sister Kate in trouble and rushed to find her along with a dead body. You think this was an accident, Kate? There are no accidents in this city. Someone wanted him dead and wanted you to take the fall. The rest of the game is about evading police and clearing Kate of any wrongdoing. The idea of a murder setup has been used so many times already, so the plot isn't anything special, and the acting is a bit bland but the protagonist fits with the genre and doesn't drone on like some games. All I care about is Kate, and for her sake, I'm gonna let you go. But if you pull a gun on me again, I will kill you. Runners, hardcore, not walking on the streets, using themselves, not guns. Controls have to be incredible to make this game work. And they're not. I mean, they're okay. Using mostly the upper buttons on the controller, there's so much faith can do. Jump from building to building, crawl through air vents, run on walls, shimmy, climb up pipes, balance on the razor's edge, swing, use a trampoline, take public transport, slide on an angle, hang on for dear life, shoot a weapon, all while Merc supports you on your journey like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure the birds are real impressed with me, but once you finish showing off, you think you might concentrate on some actual work? But nothing's more satisfying when you make that memorable leap of faith. Yeah, that was a rubbish pun, but I don't know. I mean, it's not like your hands are made of oil or jelly, but just watching the footage, you'll know what I mean. Playing it for the first time, expect to fall to your death once in a while. Once the cameras transition out of the eyes into a cutscene, we look at the characters in cell shaded 2D. Yes, they could have done them all in game, but looking back now, I'm glad it's like this. You might already know that I believe 2D graphics age better, even on a 7th gen console, and it creates a smooth atmosphere which transfers into the gameplay so fluently. The graphics look clean, crisp, and well detailed, not just because the developers at the time cared about how a game is supposed to look, but it suits the story and setting. Not too shabby for an EA game. This futuristic look reminds me a lot of the first Portal. If I do have a criticism, it's bright. Like, way too bright. Good luck trying to solve the mystery of the brightness settings. On the first few levels, there are lots of different spots to scale and traverse. As you advance through the chapters, you'd think you could use anything you see, right? Not so. You can only go to a particular wall, ledge, rail, and power line just to move on. Whatever Faith can see red is where you want to go. Handy, but there are less ways to move through the city as you'd expect, and then it gets to the point where there's only one way of moving on altogether. What makes it even more infuriating is during development, EA promised an immersive city with different pathways from point A to B. 
I'll be surprised if anyone believed them. Because in short, what you get is a linear experience. And don't get me started with the cops who are even bigger douchebags than the ones in Grand Theft Auto. All they do is shoot at you without any warning. I mean, I can sort of understand how much they want you dead, but they literally call the whole city to take you down. Nothing. They just opened fire. In the end, you have to ask yourself, how useless are these cops considering they can't beat that one unarmed runner? But when they do start to use their tiny heads, especially when there's lots of armor around it, oh man, it's frustrating. I like games with trial and error, but for some reason I hate it in this one. You can solve the problem by taking their weapons, assuming you're at the right range, which turns the game into a one second first person shooter, which also ruins the point of this game. If you're a first timer on the last few levels, it's mandatory because you can't just sneak up to disarm anyone with a weapon. Even if the police are completely blind or deaf, you're gonna get caught every time, so I've never had a chance to do so. Supposing they're daredevil clones? The point of Mirror's Edge is to go quick, stomp over anything, anyone, in and out of buildings, and feel invincible. No distractions. When you have to slow down and think about which cop to beat up, shoot or hide from, it just takes the fun out of the game and I've rage quit on it a few times as a consequence. You know you've got a problem when you get pissed off just watching the footage you've recorded of screwing up. And I'm not done. Was it too much to ask for a fully loaded chapter? This is the latest update by the way. Half-Life 2 on consoles did this as well, interrupt the gameplay with loading bars. But that's essentially a full length campaign without any cutscenes, like it never stops. It makes sense. If Faith is trying to save Kate at this speed, she might as well ditch the city altogether. She ran away from home after all. To put it bluntly, the final third of Mirror's Edge sucks, really, because it no longer becomes the game we're accustomed to near the beginning. And when all is said and done, you finally beat Mirror's Edge, you ask yourself, how long did that take? And that's because the game's length can rival The Order 1886. It only took about five to six hours to beat and most can complete it even faster than that. Thank God I bought this cheap because games that have gameplay time like this should have lower prices. If you hated the idea of going slow, at least the extras can speed things back up with time trials which are basically the levels on story mode without the cops. Sadly, this is the only extra feature. Is this the best they can do? You can also share your times online, but apart from that, there's nothing available on multiplayer. Quite unusual for an EA title. What the hell, Merc? Something's got somebody rattled, kiddo. I mean, it's sort of meh. It's far too short, the controls are average at best, the trial and error is microscopic, and the plot is sharp thin. But that's usually the case when trying something new. It's not going to be perfect, which is why I had high hopes for Catalyst. But as for the original, 6.5 out of 10 is my rating. It's above average. I was ready to give this game based on my thoughts on the idea of a first person platformer a 7.5 or even 8. But just because something is original doesn't mean it gets the benefit of the doubt. There are plenty of elements that can be improved and added. Most importantly, there should be some way to make it a multiplayer experience as well. And this has come from someone who doesn't even care about that sort of thing. Overall, this game gave us something innovative which is considered interesting in gamers' minds and overwhelming by EA standards. It's worth purchasing if you can find it cheap because it's not as overlooked as you might think. Why can't we have more first person platformers like Mirror's Edge? 